In this video, I'll show you how you can delay the appearance of your next button on the first visit to a slide, but have it appear right away when learners go back to it. So I had kind of an epiphany and I was driving in my car and I almost forgot it, but I realized that, hey, there's an easy way that we can have the next button, which is normally delayed in its appearance, uh, to appear right away when learners return to a slide that they've already completed watching, such as a slide where, you know, like this one here, where we have some animation, it could be a long passage of narration, or maybe there's a video on the slide. And as you can see here, I have my next button right there. You can see it on the slide here. I've delayed it to appear only after all the animation has occurred. And I was thinking, you know, there's all kinds of interesting ways that you can delay the appearance and then use variables to keep track of it. And this idea just popped in my head. So let's preview it first of all and see what happens here. So if we preview this in HTML5, we'll see the first slide. There'll be a little bit of animation here. Our titles come in and approximately uh, after 15, 14, 15 seconds or so, the next button will appear and um, I'll be able to move forward to the next slide. Now I'm on the next slide. If I click back, I have to watch the whole thing over. I can't just skip forward again using the next button because of its delayed appearance. So let me show you my solution to fix that here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make a copy of my next button. I'm going to select it and press Control D on my keyboard to duplicate it. Now I'm going to change the copy that I've just made. We're going to go to the Properties Inspector and under the Timing Panel, we're going to uncheck the pause. The original pause will still be there, but we're going to actually have this version of the next button appear from the very beginning and for the rest of the slide. So you can see it there. The difference is, is that we're going to call this uh, second visit next or something like that. Second next, ne second next works. I think that works fine, uh, but you can call it whatever you wish, but we're going to make it not visible in output. I'm going to select the original next button and then the second next button that I've just created and I'm going to right click and make sure that they are aligned and resized to the same size so that they appear basically as one. One's right over top of the other. So what we need to do is when we click this next button, instead of simply going to the next slide, we wanted to do two things. We want to have it show my second next, but also go to the next slide. So again, this second next is not visible in output the first time. And when users click on this next button, they're going to run a little advanced action, a very simple advanced action here. So we'll go into our project drop down menu and select advanced actions. And we'll call this, we'll call it second next. All we're going to do is we're going to show second next and go to next slide. So this is barely an advanced action. It's really just two actions that we've put together here. We could save it as an action, click OK, and we can run this in this one, one instance because we're showing very specifically the second next here. But here's a thought. If I save this as a shared action and second hidden next button, just give it a description for that button that you want to show up when you go to the next slide. And we can save that. And the advantage of this is I can reuse that same shared action over and over again, just pointing to different second next buttons on all the slides in my course that are similar to this one. So on success, we're going to 
execute shared actions and we just need to let the shared action know. Think of a shared action as a fill in the blank advanced action where we just simply point to the different objects where we're using this structure. Uh, we already know the go to next slide part that we don't need to adjust, but we just need to identify what the name of our second next is in this case here. So in this case, it's still second next. It'll be called something different on subsequent slides, but that's okay. So we'll click save and I think we're good to go. This is already pointing at second next. Let's do a little preview in HTML5 and see if this works. All right, so here we are on our first slide. We're waiting, we're waiting, we're listening to the narration. Again, we could be watching a, a longer video. And then only once we've completed listening to this content will our next button appear. So if I click next, I'm brought to the very next slide. Maybe something else is there. For whatever reason, I want to go back and see what's on the first slide again. I click back and of course this time my next button is there right away and I don't need to make my learners wait until all this content has gone through because they've already seen it once before. They can go ahead and press next whenever they wish. If you thought this video was helpful, please like and share it with your colleagues. If you need help with Adobe Captivate, hire Paul for one-on-one -on -one instruction. Paul's goal is to focus on lessons based on your specific needs visit his website at CaptivateTeacher.com and don't forget to subscribe to his YouTube channel.